let's fast forward now to 2020, uh -huh. right? That's the next big one. Yep. And I remember getting a call with Janet Marie Smith, who's spoken at this conference, and I, and, and uh, asking for a group of students. And to, to kind of paint this picture for you guys, it's, and I won't steal too much of it, but you couldn't walk around Dodger Stadium. Like you could not go 360 degrees. The outfield pavilion was old, it wasn't attached. Um, and it didn't have, like if you go to PNC Park in Pittsburgh, for example, it's, it's 360 degrees, you've got bars in the outfield, those kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. um, you had all kinds of ADA considerations, building code restrictions, those kinds of things, right? And yeah. so it was a big, big undertaking. Well, and I think you could see, we did everything we could until we had the money or the interest to put new infrastructure in. So we lean in on signage everywhere. We're yeah. trying, like, there is a, you have, 50, 50,000 plus people that you're trying to balance. And that itself is its own struggle. And so getting those people to know, hey, you have alternatives, hey, you have options. We did the best we could, but we had just egress stairs and one elevator for the entire building. Yeah. Because it was set up thinking, well, no one's gonna go anywhere else, they're only gonna stay on their level. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've used this project as a means of undoing it because we knew we were creating this destination and the video mentions how it's a front door to the stadium. And really the whole point of this was to give people space. Uh, to give, we saw more and more jerseys coming closer and closer to the ballpark in Echo Park, Sunset Boulevard, which is the neighborhood next to Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. And at the time the stadium was built, even 10 years ago, it was auto shops and tattoo parlors, and there wasn't a game day presence to that neighborhood. And so really we all noticed that LA was changing. People were taking rideshare, which was a huge difference to the idea that 17,000 cars are just coming and parking. So now we had people meeting at bars, we had people, we noticed there's just, there's a good chunk of our fan base who's ready to be a part of the game two or three hours earlier than they used to be. Right. And so we wanted to, we had to really do a lot of different studies and ways to try to prove that because time is a really difficult variable. Ask yeah. any person in physics or anything else. It's hard to put a, you're, you're, you're in really theoretical land. And so we actually used Mark's group of students at UCLA uh, to argue that escalators pay themselves off. And, and yeah. we're in a very revenue-driven world in sports, and more and more, everyone wants a very clean and simple ROI for everything. And most things do not have that. Yeah. Um, even you know a luxury suite or a new premium club, you're still making an interpretation and a bet on what you're getting back. Yeah. And so we just said, listen, we see, we have some data on our vehicle gates, on our entry gates, we see this really big gap in time. People are arriving in the parking lot thinking they're ready for the first inning, and they're only getting here another 20 minutes later. Yeah. So we can only fight the battles we can sign up for, yeah. but your students, and I think one of them is here as well, Whitney, um, leapt at the opportunity to help us benchmark. We told them to be four different kinds of fans. One, we told exactly where to go. They entered off to the right-hand side uh, of the existing photo on the left, and we said, you have seats on the opposite side of the ballpark. And that's a pretty common instance for our fans, because most of our parking was on one side, but your seat could be anywhere. And so we told someone exactly where to go, mm -hmm. exactly how to get there the fastest, but on a game day, told them all to time themselves. And we told another person vaguely where to go. We told another person who had never been to the building nothing. Yeah. And we said, good luck to you. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then we told, we asked, we asked the group, we said, and we, we would like one of you, if, if you can, to hop in a wheelchair, because we really want to see what this is. Yeah. And Whitney jumped to it and said, oh, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it was four minutes, seven minutes, 15 minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah. And so we said to ourselves, a lot of our fans are in that. 12 to 18 minute range and that we felt almost responsible for the seats that are still getting filled in that yeah. first inning. And LA has a reputation as a late arriving crowd, but you, yeah. you feel, you feel pity because you're saying actually, no, they, they thought they were there on time. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, obviously this stadium was built pre ADA regulations and whatnot. And I, and I know in discussing this with Whitney last night, she's like, you know, the, the perspective of sitting in a wheelchair and seeing you know, your eye level with people's butts all the way around and you can't see anywhere you're going is, gives it a whole different perspective. And I, I, always, I always think 
folks need to acknowledge that accessibility is, is wheelchairs, but it's everything. It is the idea that you have a handrail that leads you down a stair. All of us use the accessibility code, yeah. and it makes our lives a lot easier. Yeah. So treating it as your friend rather than a limitation, I think, has really, we treat it as a design feature. Yeah.